1973, on the Fort Peck Reservation in Poplar, Montana, four teenagers, two boys and two girls, were partying and drinking at the train bridge, which was about a quarter mile outside town. It was nighttime and they were parked off in a wooded area when they began to hear what sounded like a woman crying. One of the teenagers exited the vehicle to go and check. He wanted to find out if somebody was in trouble. After a few minutes, he returned to the car, though when he returned, he was different, crazed. He began attacking the car, trying to kick in the windshield and pounding on the roof. The driver, David, was so frightened that he actually smashed a beer bottle on the steering wheel in order to protect himself. After many tense minutes, the teen seemed to snap out of it. He was unclear what had happened and had no explanation, nor would he elaborate on what he encountered in those woods. Curiously, in 2013, this individual was struck and killed by a train on that very bridge where this incident took place. Were the two incidents related? Was the crying overheard by the teens related to a banshee, as his brother would come to later believe? It is said that a banshee heralds the death of a family member, so it is curious if the witness encountered this being, and if the death it bore was his own. A witness in Indiana described encountering a bizarre creature, seemingly out of time and space, while driving to work. It was 2012. The witness, a man named Carl, had left for work at 2 o'clock in the morning and was driving along when he spotted something on the far outreaches of his headlights. It was crawling across the road. He assumed his eyes were playing tricks on him, and he immediately dismissed it. I just kind of blew it off. I just thought, well, you know, I just seen something weird. It crawled really weird. And what I seen just didn't make any sense. So then, about a year later, I was going to work again, and it jumped out of the weeds. There was like a three-foot-high weeds on the side of the road, and it jumped out right at the edge of my car, like it was, it didn't jump out like it was going to run across the road, it jumped out like it was going to attack whatever came by. This time the witness got a decent look at the creature, and it was unlike anything he'd ever seen before. He described it as standing about two and a half feet tall, and, in his words, the bottom half of it was like a spider, and the top half of it was like a monkey. It is unclear what type of creature this is. I've encountered stories in which gigantic spiders were observed with human faces, but never one described as a half arachnid, half simian. That's definitely a new one for me. When George was around four years old, back in 1959, he recalls being at a camp in Adams, Tennessee, the area of the Bell Witch Cave, when he and others observed a strange sight a rabbit the size of a cow. Even though he was very young, he could vividly remember what he and a group of other children and adults saw that day. The rabbit was all white except for one of its back legs, it was black. It looked at us, it seen us. I mean, we were quite a ways away from it, but I was sure it could see us, and I didn't want any part of being near that thing. Just. It just did not have a very pleasant look to it, he recalled. Sometime later, he was told that the Bell Witch was able to change her form to that of a rabbit, and that was what he saw that day. It is unclear how true this is, but George is certain that the rabbit he saw that day was much larger than any rabbit was supposed to be. In 2016, a man in Earlville a suburb of the Cairns region in Queensland, Australia, encountered a bizarre creature in his room. At the time, he was staying at his cousin's large home. Also staying there was his father, his uncle, his wife, and their four children. His room was situated at the end of a hallway, and he had placed his single bed up against the window. Beside his bed was a car chair where he would place his phone to charge, amongst other pocket items. I was awoken for some reason at 4 a.m. Don't know why. I didn't need to pee. I woke up facing the window, and I turned over to face the door, 
when I saw a figure squatting in the car chair, humanoid with an outline of dreads and white eyes. I looked at it for only a little bit before I reached out to touch it, and as I slowly reached out from my bed, I almost get to its head before it faded away. Was this an example of sleep paralysis and hypnagogic hallucinations, or is it something else? There are a number of reports of people encountering white-eyed entities in their homes, and which seems to differ from accounts of people who encounter black-eyed beings. What these white-eyed beings are is anyone's guess. In 1975, a man and his girlfriend, on a return trip to Idaho, encountered a bizarre entity. They were headed in the direction of Yellowstone Park towards Montana East Gate in their yellow Volkswagen. The witness recalls, It was around midnight, and it was kind of snowing, and picture a two-lane road with tall trees, and no moon or nothing, just our headlights, and the snow was falling. All of a sudden there was this figure I saw walking right in the center of the road, walking the same direction as me. In other words, her back was to me. It was a lady. At first I noticed her and I told my girlfriend, do you see what I see? A girl walking out here at midnight. It's probably about 30 degrees out. The closer we got, the more detail I could make out. It was so, I was going to roll down my window and say, hey, you need help. But we noticed that she was wearing very, very old, I guess 19th century garb, clothing. And she had hobnail boots, and she had a long shawl around her shoulders, and in her hair, she had long brown hair, down probably a little bit below her shoulder blades. And the closer we got, we noticed something weird was her hair was completely dry, not wet like you would expect for somebody out in snow. The witness recalls that he was about to roll down his window when his girlfriend freaked out. Don't even stop. Don't even look. Go. You know, that freaked me out because I was just about ready to slow down. She said, don't even look in the mirror. She has no face. The couple sped away, going around her. Eventually they reached the gate and spoke to a ranger who told them that the pass was closed due to snow. He directed them to a motel about a half a mile back down the road. They managed to locate the hotel and thankfully there was one room available. They got into their room, placed a chair in front of the door and waited up till dawn. I have made videos about faceless beings in the past. It is unclear why a faceless entity would be walking down the road in the middle of a snowstorm, but on the other hand, why would a faceless being choose to be anywhere? As I speculated before, are these faceless entities that people encounter otherworldly beings who have yet to fully transition into their human form? Or are they something else altogether? On November 15, 2005, a school bus driver and numerous passengers observed a bizarre entity while traveling from Greenville to New Ionish. They had departed Greenville at about 7.20 a.m. About 20 minutes down the road, the driver spotted two very bright lights right in the middle of the highway. They were three hydro poles away from the lights, and the driver began to assume that it was a broken down logging truck due to the round bright lights. When I approached closer, about one and a half poles away, I saw a very strange creature pacing back and forth. The creature stopped after pacing between the lights twice, looked in our direction, and disappeared. And I mean it really vanished, as if it went invisible. Two other students, plus a teacher on board my bus, also saw the creature. The driver described the creature she saw as having a large egg-shaped head and a long skinny body with arms that reached down to its knees. John was the proud owner of two German Shepherds. One was forced to stay in the yard, while the other was regularly taken out for runs. Feeling bad that the yard dog wasn't getting any attention, he decided to start taking him for nightly walks on the two acres of property he had in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Our back road is very desolate, and one night I was walking him, and he just did not want to walk, and he actually stepped in front of me, 
and did not want to go any further. Okay, we walk about two miles. So we come home that night, and the next night nothing happened. The following night, after that, he did the same thing. He stepped in front of me, and, like, it's really weird, you know? He wouldn't let me walk it. But he all the way turned around and looked over his shoulder behind him. Like someone was behind us. And, like, I'm looking. Okay, he was a German Shepherd. He has a high prey drive. If we see a deer back there, he'll bark, you know? He just didn't. He was acting weird. A couple nights later, John and his pet walked up the road and again his dog began to act strangely. As we're walking back down the road, I see this thing come across the road that's black. It stops in the middle of the road and my hair stood up on my body, straight up. It was black, like a shadow. There were no eyes. There was no nothing. I stood there. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And my dog's looking at it, and I'm looking at it. It was about 15 seconds, maybe. Eventually, the entity moved across the road and into the woods, leaving John standing frightened. His dog would not go past the spot where the entity had stood, and he was forced to drag the animal home. I got back, and my wife and I have a fire pit, and I got back, I was shaking. I'll be honest with you, I didn't believe in ghosts. I didn't believe in anything. I'm like a real guy but that thing scared the shit out of me. It seems as though the shadow entity may have had some attachment to the property. Had it wanted to harm the witness, it probably would have. It's interesting that the dog was the first to sense its presence, even though John was completely oblivious. Had his dog not accompanied him, I have to wonder if he would have ever known it was there. <laughs>